Hello everyone, Genesis Ryder here, and today I'll be starting off the video a little bit differently. I'm going to show you the loadout or class I'll be using in this neutral flag gameplay on Exile. The loadout is called Passive Tank, or that's what I choose to call it because I think it describes it very well. And for those of you who are wondering, this video will be specifically dedicated to those of you who find it difficult to not only play neutral flag, and especially on Exile, but also towards those of you who find it um, very hard to go very positive in big game types on big maps like a big team battle and um, some of the larger capture the flag maps. This video is dedicated to you. So what is this passive tank loadout for and why would you want to use it? This loadout is specifically designed to provide support fire for your teammates at long range from a vantage point with many angles. What it allows you to do is stay in a stationary position while providing long range lethal fire on the enemy team. Preferably this position would be behind your teammates but very close to the front lines of battle nonetheless. Now I'm well aware that this loadout is a little bit of a sensitive topic for some people because they have bad experiences of running against people in big team battle who are using this exact same loadout and to very, very detrimental effect. Basically camping out for their perfections, getting many, many um, sprees of kills in a row without dying, and basically being almost impossible to kill. So I would not recommend that, but the way I'm going to show this loadout or try to present it in this gameplay is for players who are not extremely, extremely good, but want to provide some support for their teammates in the background. Now, yes, I am a good player, and in this game, the only reason I'm using this loadout is because I have good teammates who can fill the roles that I would be filling if I weren't using this loadout, mainly going after the flag and getting right up in the enemy team's face. Now, let's go over just one or two brief facts about the loadout before we jump into the gameplay. If I can go into the loadout real fast here, I can show you that I'm using a efficiency. And this recharges my active camouflage armor ability more quickly when I'm not in camo. It allows me to stay in camo for a very lengthy period of time. When I come out of camo, it recharges it really fast and I jump right back into camo again. Allowing me to stay visually out of enemy sight range and stay alive for a very long time. Ammo just means that I'm gonna have a buttload of ammo for my bolt shot and light rifle so that I don't have to run around the map trying to re-pick up a weapon to get more ammo. And of course, a light rifle is amazing at long range as you'll see in the gameplay. So let's jump straight into the game here. Again, just to reorient your expectations for this video, I'm specifically going to go over tips and tricks on how to play neutral capture the flag and also how to use the passive tank loadout that I detailed earlier. This gameplay is just under 10 minutes and go, does go to five flag caps. Now at the start here I want to mention a little bit of the tactics here on neutral flag. On neutral flag it is absolutely critical that your teammates be loading out the mobility armor mod and sprint infinitely to the flag. You need to get the flag back to your base, okay? Once you have the flag in your base, you need to all, all the other four of your teammates need to set up around this area. Why is that? And this is very crucial for understanding neutral flag because as soon as your teammate caps the flag back at your base, it's going to immediately reset to the center. If the enemy team has control of the center, they will get the next flag because they're going to pull it and move back to their base. But if you have the control of the center, when your teammate captures, you can easily pull the next flag back to your base. Basically rinsing and repeating the strategy, you can get five flags in a row without much trouble. Now with the loadout I'm using, I actually chose to be very aggressive off the start of this game, getting very close to the flag and using my camo to try to mess with the enemy team's strategy. Using my bolt shot to try to get some fire on the enemy player and end up picking up the flag. Now, just running over what some of my teammates have been doing here. 
one of my teammates did peel off for the beam rifle, which does spawn in this area. This is actually Proby over here in with the beam rifle. Now going back to now going back to me, I'm having the flag and I'm moving back to our base. So what Proby should do is he should push up this ramp and to the center B base. What he's going to be doing is, you'll see him doing most of the game, is control this center base so that he knows when the goshog comes up. And the goshog spawns turned over right here in the center of the map. And you can actually hear it up right now. The enemy players did end up getting, getting it right here, and they're going to try to come get me. But thankfully, my teammates do an excellent job of blowing it up for the double kills you could see in the kill feed right there. Now, watching Proby, you can see that he takes care of these guys on my radar and is going to push towards the center of the map as I just previously stated. Notice here how I do not tap the flag until my teammates have notified me that they are in a position to get the next flag. In other words, they need to kill off the enemy, some enemy players and get control of that center area. And if you'll notice right here, I see three red X's, so I see three of my teammates that have died. So I know I am not going to cap the flag right now. It's very obvious that that would be a bad idea. I'm going to wait for them to gain control. And actually, I'm just going to skip forward in the video to a point where I actually tap the flag to make it more interesting for you guys. Moving on a few more seconds into the game, my teammates do get a few kills here and one drops down, Omega, you can see there, for the flag. I cap the flag, and he immediately is carrying it back to our base along the safest route possible through Banshee side. I'm trying to provide long-range support fire, and I end up taking this flag and moving it back to our base. Now, right here is another crucial little tip that I really want to share with you guys who are unfamiliar with it. As I'm walking across this open area, an enemy player is watching for me and are going to try to kill me as I reach this door. A way to avoid this is to strong side, coined by the MLG pro player strong side. Strong sighting is when you look down to present a lower target area of mass for your head. Specifically, watch as I do this, as enemy players try to shoot my head and are unable to because I strong side across the map looking straight downward and making my head a less visible target. This, again, only gives me a few more seconds of life. It just avoids them from getting an instant headshot and from being dying prematurely. It's a very, very good technique. I highly suggest you use it. Once again, I'm going to wait around here to cap this flag. Now right here, you can see that two of my teammates' red X's just got killed. They both got killed by one sticky deck grenade. And unfortunately, I accidentally ended up capping the flag. I tried to walk around the capture plate, but I bumped off the wall a little bit and actually ran over it. This is an accidental capture on my part, but it provides a very interesting note to the gameplay. I would like to point out that is a mistake, but it did work out for this video as far as this video is concerned because it provides an interesting position, and that is the enemy team has control of the flag now. You see immediately the enemy team has the flag and is now running it back to their base because they have control of the center of the map. So how are we going to play this? Right here I do end up picking up a kill from my teammate. But right here my job is to try to um, press the enemy position. But as, as I told you about the slowdown, the slowdown is not good with head-on collisions. And as you just saw there, me engaging this opponent, I didn't ever commit to this guy. I didn't ever commit to this kill. I waited for my teammates to press up and help me with that kill. You'll see me do that several times. The reason why is because the light rifle is a five-shot kill, unlike the BR's four-shot kill. This means that when the light rifle is unzoomed, you are comparatively weaker against opponents. The light rifle is most powerful when it's zoomed because it's a four-shot kill when it's zoomed. Right here, I call out the goshawk gets flipped over, and my teammates quickly converge on that. We need to take out the enemy goshawk so that they don't get it. Right here, again, I'm just providing some camoed dots around the flags so that the enemy's players don't know what's going on. 
And right here is a really big mistake on the enemy team's part. As, as you can see, there's another guy using camo on my radar, and none of them push me, even though I'm one shot. This is possibly because I have camo as well, and they don't know precisely where I am. Seeing that guy in camo, I'm able to pick up a really clutch double kill with my bolt shot. That's specifically why you want to have the bolt shot so you're able to pick up those clutch kills while you're in camo so people don't expect that you're there. I should have strong sided a little bit more here, but I did wait for my shields to regenerate before strong sliding a little bit back to our base. Come out of strong siding just because I know I'm not going to die because my shields have such a high amount. So now the score is 2 to 1. Let's skip forward in the film and see what happens. Skipping forward in the film, you can see that Proby is guarding the center of the map, right here in the center B base. This is a very good idea to control, and my other teammate is up in Banshee Window, exactly as he should be. We also have the Gosshog, and we're running amok in their base. What this Gosshog is going to attempt to do is kill off several enemy players, and then this guy will drop down and I'll cap the flag. Unfortunately, what happens is a Warthog ends up being blown up um, right here, and my teammate does drop, and he does end up getting the flag and pulling it back to our base. He's able to get so far because the enemy players have been killed off so much by our Gosshog. So right here, my teammate decides to grab the flag and move back to our base. I provide excellent support fire. Notice how fast that light rifle is at just mowing through enemy players. It's really, really good, especially when you have teammate support just like this. Pushing up the Banshee window, I'm going to um, use my camo to stay out of sight and possibly out of mind. Now, right here, I make a kind of questionable decision. I probably should have stayed alive in Banshee, but I end up dropping down for the flag. And I want to notice how long I'm able to stay alive because I'm using camo and staying still here. I'm able to kill a flag carrier, grab the flag, and stay alive a little bit more. Could have started firing a little bit earlier with the pistol there. And you can see that guy thruster packing as he's grab grabbing the flag. That's a really good idea. And this puts us in an interesting position. Now, I want you to notice the player I'm shooting at right now has a beam rifle. So he likely killed my teammate and is now pushing up from behind on my teammates Toby and other people who are up in Banshee Window. This is a really good idea, but unfortunately... He doesn't realize that pushing that far out to the open means that we will spawn normally in this area. So right here is where the game gets interesting. This is one of the reasons why I like this film is because we go, I have to go on to kind of the offensive with this loadout. And as you can see, again, I'm not committing to any kills. I'm not committing to or trying to 100% um, jump out and fully commit to a kill. I'm staying behind cover, being very annoying to the enemy team, using my teammates as support. Great shots for my teammates there to clean up that guy who would have likely killed me. Right here, again, kind of questionable play on my part. I really should have been staying up here in this general area, but I was just trying to get out into the open because my team has grabbed the flag right here. You can see that we have the flag and are pulling it back to our base. Unfortunately, that push doesn't end up working, and the enemy players pull the flag back to their base. It's an epic struggle here. Now, the reason why the enemy team is holding on so frantically to this flag and not tapping it is because it's 4 to 1. If we get one more flag cap, the game is over. So that means if they cap the flag right now, the flag will reset there, and the flag cap that they just got won't matter because we have the flag in the center and we'll run it straight back to our base for the final cap. Now I want to point out right here how just really good these nades are. I throw two almost absolutely perfect nades. Good shots by my teammate behind me to clean up that guy. Then again, absolutely perfect nades on that guy. That's really what you want to save your two grenades for on Exile when you're pushing Banshee Window like this. It's Banshee Window because Banshee spawns right where I'm standing in Big Team Battle. Sticky Death spawns here and captures the flag. Once again, I'm just being very passive aggressive. I want you to notice how I play this with my teammate. Backing up, letting my teammate handle some of these kills and throw some grenades at his own. And once you see I get one shot, I stay up here kind of in camo. Now, when you are like right where I am right now, you are the most visible. As you can see by the yellow recharge on my player, I'm in camo right now, but I'm recharging my shields. That's when you're the most visible. If you have 
absolutely no shields. There is a mild flicker, just like when I killed that guy in the very center of the map right here when he was standing right there in camo. There's a mild flicker, but you can it's much harder to see your opponent except when your shields are first starting to recharge. Now, once your shields are recharged, you can see that I go back into camo quite quickly. And notice how I'm not committing to this kill again until I jump out and know I absolutely have to commit to the kill. And it ends up really disorienting the enemy player. Again, amazing shots, trying to really, really get some long range fire. I get the wingman five assists in a row without dying. I noticed that I don't have much ammo in my light rifle, so I decide to really, really lay on the pain train on the enemy team. Now, I'd like to point out something here. Um, again, the enemy team is pressing Banshee window because they know I'm up here, but because they have to get control of the center area so that their teammate can capture the flag safely, reset it, and they can get the next flag. This, again, is just something that a lot of beginner players who capture the flag don't understand. That's why I'm reorienting reorienting it several times. I probably shouldn't have jumped out here, but I do end up getting a pretty good double kill, kill from the grave, and my teammate learns uh, the value of not running into an enemy grenade there, but that's unfortunate. Again, if the enemy has grenades, you just want to let them use those grenades up before you charge. Now right here, I'm really trying to provide support fire because I can see that my team is trying to push into this flag, but I see several of my teammates have died here, so again, I'm not going to push up. This class is not designed to push up. I see this guy, Banshee, window, and I decide to try to keep him there, really keeping his shields low, and notice how, I again, I'm not com completely committing to this kill. I'm just trying to keep him weak and keep him behind cover. Because I have camo, I have a mild advantage. This guy is not going to pop out really super often because he knows I have camo. He doesn't know where I could be at any given moment. This guy does give me one shot, and I want to give you a reason why I charge out here and actually die to this guy. Because we have the flag, and we are currently trying to move it across the map. I'm trying to provide a good distraction for my teammates so that they can make the flag across the map back to our base. And just to let you know, normally you're going to spawn either here or on the opposite side of your base in Capture the Flag. It's very, very predictable where you're going to spawn. So right here, I get a good spawn, and this is one of the reasons my teammate pulled in this direction, is so that we can have support fire. Now, I want you to notice how absolutely crucial my light rifle is in this part. Absolutely melting enemy players across the map before they can do anything, and picking up a nice double kill here. This is nearing the end of the video. I hope you guys understand a little bit more why this class is a little bit more valuable than you may have previously realized. I hope you can try it out if you're having trouble with um, Big Team Battle or Capture the Flag. And you can use it in combination with teammate support. Stay just behind your teammates and provide good long-range fire on the enemy team. And now I can go over a few of the after-game stats to give you guys an idea of how well I did in the game. So right here you can see I went 20 kills, 4 deaths, and 10 assists. That's pretty good being the largest KD spread in the game and the second most kills in the game. And a pretty decent amount of assists as well. Uh, this game was really good, I felt like, because I got a really high score. I kept 3 flags in the game and yet still had the highest KD spread of them all, which is really, really just overall very good. And the enemy players are not bad at all. Wait till the very end of the video to see their stats. But they're really not that bad. And the fact that we made them all go negative, especially in Hailed Frog, um, was really phenomenal. Shout out to my teammate Tobias, who was in the Goss Hog and really doing well with that, and Mr. Gigglebutts, who was driving him. Proby guarding the center of the map, and Omega, who was staying in Banshee Window and doing all-around support and grabbing a few of the flags. So I'll see you guys in the next video I capture, or whatever I end up recording.
part is going to be dedicated to those of you who may believe that we are facing people who don't know what they're doing. So let me read off a few stats to you. All of the enemy players we faced in that game were SR rank 130. They had maxed out their rank in the game. So let's go over some stats. Travesty XD has over 44,000 kills and a 1.6 KD. Inhaled Frog has over 73,000 kills, almost as many as I have, and a 2.2 KD. Soxy B has the fewest kills in the all at 31,000, and he's mildly negative, but not by a staggering amount. Hack Notorious has over 79,000 kills, more kills than I have, and a 1.6 KD. And rounding out the enemy team, Go El Lucan 69 has. 39,000 kills, or above that, and a 1.6 KD. So you can tell that we're facing people who generally know their way around the game at least, if not even more so, they're actually pretty decent at the game, getting definitely more than one kill per death, obviously except for um, Soxie here. But you can understand that this loadout does work against people who are good, especially if you know what you're doing, but it mainly works on big team battle maps and if you have good teammate support.